In this video, we are going to talk to you about um, a common statistical technique which is called regression. Regression is a statistical tool that is very useful if you have bivariate data. That is, both your x and your y variable are both continuous. The goal of regression analysis is to de develop an equation that allows you to describe the relationship between the two variables. There are many types of regression equations and several ways to develop the equation between the independent and dependent variable. We will only consider the simplest form here, and that's the simple linear regression, when you have only one x and one y at a time. Regression differs from correlation analysis in that the x variable in a regression is said to be fixed. That means that it is a value that is determined by the experimenter and thus lacks variation. In this experiment on hemolysis, that means that the independent variables of distribution coefficient and molecular free weight for a given solute are invariate. Are invariant. For example, each molecule of urea in that solute in that solution has the same distribution coefficient and free weight as every other molecule. On the other hand, y is free to vary, and thus we will use the mean rate of lysis as our dependent variable and we will need to show the standard error of that mean on the graph. To do a regression, you will use Excel to create a scatter plot of the data. Then you will use the trend line feature to determine the line of best fit through the data. This line, which is also known as the regression line, is the one that minimizes the deviation of the points from the line. This figure shows what I mean. The red axis are the actual data. The computer program has calculated every possible line through those points and has also determined the deviation of each point from each possible line. That deviation is shown on the graph as the orange arrows that connect the observed data from the points on the line of best fit. The regression line drawn is the one that makes the sum of these deviations the smallest possible number. The computer then draws the predicted values for each point, which in this case are the blue ovals, and the regression line through it. The line that is commonly fit in the form of a regression for a straight, for a simple linear regression is a straight line, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is the intercept. This equation can then be used in many different ways. One of the common uses for regression is to predict a value for a dependent variable from any value of the independent variable. We won't need that for the hemolysis data, but it's a common use for these equations. Another metric which is often reported is R squared, or the coefficient of determination. It can be symbolized using the small letter R, or the capital R as R squared, and we will use the small r for this course. R squared is a measure of how well the data points fit the line, and it can take a value from 1 to 0. The larger the value, the better fit of the line to the data, and this is shown by the three graphs on this slide. In the leftmost graph, the value of r squared is 0, and there is no pattern to the points. The center graph shows r squared at 0 0.5, and there's a trend in the data, but still a lot of scatter. The rightmost graph shows r squared as 1.0, and the points form a line with the, with the regression line fit on top of it. This is simple regression, and now what I want to do is show you how you can do this um, in Excel starting with a scatter graph. Alright, so here's some data. I have um, a column for compound, a column for my independent variable, a column for family, which means that I have two different sets of solutions, a column for my mean dependent variable, which might be rate of lysis for your hemolysis experiment, and a column for the standard error of the mean. And note that I've used a thick black line to divide the data from family A from family B. I want to be able to graph those two families separate to see if they have the same kinds of regression lines. So I'm going to start by going up to the Insert menu and pulling down Chart. Now depending on what kind of uh, version of Excel you're using, you might start off in a slightly different way. But what you want to get is to a... Um, scattergram so I'm going to choose the scattergram and then I'm going to right click on the scattergram 
Oops. And whoop. there we are. And I'm going to choose Select Data. This is going to allow me to input my data for my two groups diff uh, separately. I'm going to click Add on a Data. I'm going to call it Family A. I'm going to go to the X Values box and choose my independent variables for Family A. There's those four numbers. Go to my Y Values box, choose my means. There's those four numbers. I'm going to add another series. Give that one family B. And repeat the process of adding the X variable and the Y variable. That belongs to family B. When I've got both of those entered, I hit OK. And here's my graph. I've got family A data points here as the blue triangles and I've got family B as the red squares. I'm going to make these grid lines disappear just to make it a little easier to see the points. Now what I would want to then do is add the standard error of the mean and I can do that by right clicking, selecting the data series and right clicking on it. Go to Format Data Series error bars. Now Excel can either do X error bars or Y error bars. Since my X var variable is fixed, I'm not going to put on X error bars, but I'm going to click on Y error bars. I want to have error bars going in both directions. I'm going to use my calculated standard error of the mean rather than what Excel gives me as a choice. So I'm going to specify my value. Again, select the correct four values. Whoops. There we are, the correct four values. The same four values for the lower direction. And hit OK. And hit OK. Now in this case, the error bars are very small. So I'm again going to select my data series and go to Format Data Series. And in this case, I wanted to remove the marker fill. So I'm going to make the markers no fill. And now I can see that I have these very teeny tiny error bars inside a blue diamond that doesn't have any color inside of it. And I would do the same thing for family B. I'm not going to do that here. The other thing I would want to do is add um, Axis labels, I'm not going to do that here, but that's something that you can work on in class with your professors. What I do want to do is add a trend line. So I'm going to add my trend line to family A. I'm going to again right click on um, select uh, the data for family A, right click and go to add trend line. I want a simple linear trend line, so this is um, correct. I'm going to choose options. I'm going to give it a name, and I'm just going to give it the same name, Family A. I, in this particular case, I don't want to know what the equation of the line is. I'm not interested in predicting anything, but I do want to know how well the data fit the line, so I'm going to tell it to give me the R squared value. Um, I could choose a line that has um, a gradient. Maybe I don't want to necessarily have um, or, or a color. Um, there's all kinds of options that you can do here. Oh, here we are. Um, I'm just going to click OK. And here's my trend line for family A. My R squared value is 0 0.9, which is pretty good. And um, I can do the same thing for family B, and that will finish up my graph. Oh, actually, there is one other thing I want to do with this graph. You notice that the y-axis here goes down below the um, zero mark. I'm going to click on that y-axis, right-click on it, uh, go to Format Axis, and make that zero for the minimum. And that way, I don't have the negative numbers, the meaningless negative numbers on the graph.